Today is November the 15th, it's a Wednesday, and we are reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 together. Remember, the book of Thessalonians was written to this church in Thessalonica, a church that Paul had been at for a few weeks and then had to leave the city really in a hurry because of a dispute that broke out between the Jewish people who had incited a mob to riot against what Paul was preaching. And he's writing to this church to remind them to stand firm, to continue what they're doing because he was concerned for them. He only had to spend a few weeks with them, then had to leave. He's, we find out from this uh, book that he sent Timothy back to check on them a few times. I mean, there's just some things that happens in this book that we find out about. But Paul is concerned for them. These are like his spiritual children, and he cares for them, and he wants them to continue to grow in Jesus. Here's some things I highlighted in this chapter, and later I'd love to hear what you highlighted as well. In verse 1, it says this, You know, brothers and sisters, this is chapter 2, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of our God, and we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. Yesterday, I talked about the opposition that he received in Thessalonica, but he's writing to them about opposition he had before Thessalonica. What is he talking about? Well, if you remember in Acts chapter 16, that's the chapter right before the one we read yesterday and talked about in Thessalonica, Paul was in this city called Philippi, which he refers to. Philippi was this colony of the Roman Empire that uh, it wasn't really a full-fledged city yet, but it also wasn't full of uh, people who weren't citizens. It was a colony. It was a place where retired veterans from the military would gather and do different things. Paul was in this city, though, and he was thrown into prison because of his preaching about Jesus. Uh, this is when... Uh, Paul and Silas were praying in prison, and, and, the, and the foundations of the prison shook open, and uh, the doors, and there was this awesome thing that happened in the middle of the night where all the doors went open, and the Philippi, Philippian jailer came in. He thought Paul and all these people had left, and he was going to kill himself, because if, if you lost a prisoner, you lost your life. And Paul says, no, 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 don't kill yourself, we're here. And he ends up converting the Philippian jailer, his entire household, and ends up preaching to the city and the people about Jesus, the very person he was put into prison for. Paul is used to hardships. One of the things I, I even highlighted in this is that trouble just seems to follow Paul wherever he goes, right? He was in Philippi, was thrown in prison for preaching Jesus. He leaves prison, goes to Thessalonica, a mob breaks out against him. But Paul was determined that Jesus is the only way to heaven, that Jesus is God incarnated, and he has made his he came and lived among us and showed us how to follow God faithfully, that he's everything the Jews had been hoping for and everything the world is looking for. Jesus is everything, and Jesus changes everything. Paul had such devotion to his message that he didn't care if he was imprisoned, if he was shipwrecked, if he was beaten, if he was uh, thrown out of the city by a mob. He was going to preach the gospel that God showed up and changed everything in Jesus. But what we find out is the more you preach the gospel, and this is the same thing that's, uh, that's going to happen to you too, the more you preach the gospel, the more that Satan's going to fight against it because Satan doesn't want Jesus to win. Satan doesn't want God's word and God's work to work in your life and win. There's going to be opposition to it. Let's keep going. If you look down a little further in verse 9, it says, Surely remember, brothers and sisters, of our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel to you. If I could just summarize this part of it a little bit, Paul also talks about this in other uh, books and letters he writes, but a lot of times Paul did not take any money from people um, as support because he didn't want them to say, you're just in it for the money. And in this passage, another passage, he says, I worked hard and preached the gospel, and I was generous with my stuff. You should work hard and be generous, too. Work hard. Don't be lazy. Um, and the rest of the chapter, we see that he talks about being united in our suffering. This is from verse 13 to uh, verse uh, 16. He's talking about how the Jews persecuted Jesus, the Jews persecuted Paul and the apostles, and now the Greeks are, uh, and the Gentiles are persecuting the church at Thessalonica, and that all these sufferings unite these people. They unite Paul, they unite Jesus, they, they unite us all when we go through sufferings and we go through persecution with our Savior. He went through sufferings, and we also, for his gospel, get to go through sufferings too. Paul saw that actually as a really cool thing, that we get to join in the suffering of Jesus. We get to partake in his ministry of suffering because his gospel message is worth it. Lastly, Paul writes that uh, that their faithfulness is verses 17 through 20. 
that the faithfulness to God uh, was a great fulfillment to him because he was concerned. He was concerned that they had lost their way. He was concerned since he was with them for such a short time that Satan would win and that they would stop following God. But when he sent Timothy to them, and then Timothy comes back, we're going to talk about that more tomorrow, they were following God. And that was such a great fulfillment to his heart and joy for him to hear of their faithfulness to God. What did you highlight? What did you see? What did you, um, I would love to dialogue about those things with you. What we learned about Jesus in this passage is that uh, Jesus suffered a lot for the gospel, right? Jesus took the suffering on himself and, and that he and doesn't say it's going to be easy. But what I love is in John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, in this world, you're going to have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. He doesn't promise things are going to get easy, but he does promise that he overcomes, that he wins. What I learned about people is that we have a choice. When hardships come against us, we have a choice to either cling to Jesus and be reminded that he also suffered, that he also went through these trials, that he also had a world who did not like him. And we can cling to that and remember that Jesus knows what we're going through, or we can choose to run away. I hope you choose to cling to Jesus. A next step you can take is you can be faithful wherever you're at. You can be faithful to what God is doing in your life. You can be faithful and, and clinging to Jesus and then sharing with others your faithfulness. Not to brag about yourself, but sometimes it's just really encouraging to share your story with other people about how, man, I went through this and this is how I chose to trust Jesus. And it encourages me to hear those stories because then I say, I want to be like that. I want to be someone who clings to Jesus no matter what. And we sharpen one another to follow Jesus better. If you've read this chapter, you are sent. Otherwise, let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 together. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error and pure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God, who tests our hearts. You know we never use flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else, even though as apostles of Christ we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually because when, we, when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it. Not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews, who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and also drove us out. They displease God and are hostile to everyone, in their effort to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. In this way, they always heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. But... Brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you, for we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, did again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when, we, when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Lord, we thank you for today. Help us to honor you in all that we say and all that we do and using our moments to help other people follow Jesus well. Amen. Church, until we see each other tomorrow, you are sent. Have a great day.